start. Okay. Oh, go live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I need some help <laughs> with the stream. No, I think I'm... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, I, I see some lag. No video yet. No! This is a test run. <laughs> you, you, there is no video. Now I'm live. <laughs> Can you hear me okay or am I not? See, this is a test run. <laughs> I see you, sir. Okay. Well, hello, let's create 08. How's it going? So, yeah, this is, I'm trying to use, I never used OBS with the YouTube before, I'm trying to connect it. And I thought it would be simple, but I shouldn't have assumed that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this is kind of a test run. I just woke up, I know, right? It's because of this low quality uh, camera. I'm using my webcam. Uh, I was considering using my better camera, but I'm like, yeah, I probably shouldn't delay further. Looks like I need to share. Yeah, this is my um, philosophy beer. Let me turn on the lights. Let me turn on the lights. I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. It might help. It might not help at all, though. Ugh. It helps a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. YouTube is lagging big time. Chat, is, particularly with OBS, we got some lag <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, I think a few people are on there and then they left, uh, which is fine, whatever. <laughs> uh, this is more of a test run. I still, uh, I was trying to get, I need to get how to get some background music. That's why I wanted to use OBS because... I wanted to get some chill background music, but I don't, YouTube doesn't allow that with its interface, its own personal interface. You know, I wanted to do OBS, uh, but it, I thought I could do it quickly, but mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, it has some lag, but it's cool. So uh, there's a few things I want to talk about, but first, um, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'm just going to leave for uh, just a few minutes, just a few minutes. I got to take care of my doggy. My doggy needs some uh, some uh, snacks. <laughs> okay, it's much better. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna type in the chat. I'll be right back. Uh, just two minutes, uh, taking care of my doggy. <laughs> be right back. Just a few minutes. <laughs> I'll be right back. No worries. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think he doesn't want to be on camera right now, apparently. He wants to do his own thing. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and talk and just have a discussion. Uh, you know, I just, so well, yeah, so I got some things that I would like to say. And, uh, you know, I, I know this is kind of new. I don't usually do the live streams. Uh, I do them once a year. <laughs> for my like anniversary 
thing, but I'd like to do them more. So I know a lot of people probably aren't um, going to watch. And I'm sure, like, because of the late start, people were like, oh, I guess he's not really doing this. <laughs> but uh, it's fine because they'll have the the VOD or whatever they call it here on YouTube, the pre the recording, and y'all can check that out later. And this is more of a practice one. I still don't got it. So I'm going to use OPS. So first of all, I have this this better microphone, <laughs> if I could show you. Shotgun mic. Oh, wait a minute. Shotgun mic. Got to be careful because it's very sensitive. Very sensitive. I think I peaked there. Uh, so, you know, some better some better art, uh, audio. So that's cool. And so, and I'm trying to use um, streaming software rather than the YouTube to do that. Yeah, it's more interactive. That's cool. Um, and that's great. Thanks for showing up. Let's create. I have no idea. Does YouTube over here tell me? Uh, concurrent viewers I uh, yeah I don't even know who's watching who's not <laughs> I, I assume it's pretty low uh, which is fine totally no 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 pressure no problem um, yeah so yeah I was just thinking about the my channel so I, for in case you're new I know let's create oh hey you're kind of new uh, to my uh, philosophy channel uh, I've been doing it for a while nine years I think and uh, you know, I've been doing these philosophy videos. I read philosophical texts and then I just talk about things that I find interesting about the text. And then I, you know, discuss it on YouTube. And then really, I just interact via the comments. Um, and I've been thinking over, you know, recently about, okay, where do I want to take this, this channel? What, what other things I want to do? Uh, because, you know, I'm the type of person who, um, you know, high numbers, or viewers, that doesn't really motivate me, <laughs> I'll be honest. And I've, I've said this in the past, where it's like, I'm not playing a numbers game. Which, you know, if that's what you're doing, that that's cool. You know, no hate. They're not trying to say, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you, you chasing the numbers. You're, you're, uh, you're whack for doing that. If that's your thing, I know that's some people's livelihoods and they make money off YouTube and they need to focus on that, and that's cool. But that's not really where I focus on. And that is pretty obvious, right, that I don't focus on that kind of thing. Uh, it just doesn't find me joy. And, you know, you're chasing the algorithms, and you're trying to, like, it, you know, it's a, whole, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, right? You, um, you know, you got to start, like, catering your content. And you, you, after a while, you kind of have to start – making content that's not really you it's just it's just you really focusing on the you know what youtube wants rather than what you want <laughs> so that's not really my thing but i do get a lot of interaction um and uh, i do have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations via the comments but when i do my uh, videos um you know it's more like i'm talking at people which is not to say that sometimes that's good you know philosophy it's more like a philosophy class where I'm just, I'm a lecturer. And then like the YouTube comment section is like after hours or like office hours. And I, I think philosophy, part of philosophy is kind of more, is, is a dialogue. It's like a dialectic. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I kind of want to be more about that. And you know, I think that would also increase the learning. And let me see what you're saying here. Uh, do you put together all the streaming equipment? Yeah, I don't, I don't have much streaming equipment. <laughs> I don't, I don't, not a high tech. I don't have, I'm not a gear person, so I don't, I don't have much. I, I mean, you can see, right? <laughs> I don't have like ring lights or any of that. You know, I, I, the shotgun mic is actually from my, um, you know, I, um, uh, play musical instruments on the side. That's not a thing, not an expert in that, but I, you know, finally got a, um, uh, a microphone to help with that record the sound better uh, so I, yeah i do it myself but it's not much to set up <laughs> what else you saying how long have you had this channel i started in 2014 i think yeah, if i'm not mistaken january 2014 so it's been a while just for fun yeah 
Hello, the age of goddess. <laughs> Interaction makes it more interesting, too. Uh, yeah. And also, um, so I do... Yeah, so this is more like introductory stream. I want to like do this st a stream like every week. <laughs> if that's... Uh, you know, I, I do want to make it like a weekly thing. Uh, and I'll have topics that I'll talk about, but I don't, we don't have to stick to the topic. That's the other thing. We can kind of just free ball it if people are like, yeah, I don't want to really talk about that. I got other questions. That's fine too. But I do want to have like a topic just in case it's like nobody on <laughs> or people don't really want to talk. Um, but, you know, I, I, I study philosophy on the side. Like, I, you know, I, for, Currently, I consider myself a philosophy enthusiast or a philosophy hobbyist, I would say. Uh, so I'm not like a philosophy expert. I don't do philosophy professionally. And I don't think I ever want to do it professionally or get be it like a paid job. But I do want to start transitioning to, I actually want to be a philosopher. <laughs> you know, want to like, you know, transition from like philosophy hobbyist to like, no, no, actually this guy's an actual philosopher. So, and I think to do that, yeah, I got to start like talking to people directly and, um, you know, and learning in that way. Um, I don't, I don't have a degree in philosophy, so I'm not an expert. I would say I'm still not, I don't consider myself an expert. And so I still got a lot to learn. And I think like the next step is to, you know, rather, you know, I'm still reading texts, philosophical texts, and I still will be doing the videos on text. Uh, no problem with that. Uh, currently, I'm reading um, this right here. <laughs> it's just a, it's, it's a, a big ass um, work. It's a work that, do I, yeah, there's no... It's the philosophy, it's the science of logic by Hegel. Like one of those beefy, philosoph and I just printed, <laughs> it's for free, I just printed the pages in a binder. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I don't, like, bust out with videos often, because I, I usually do one video per text, and if a, a text takes a long time to read, then I just won't come out with a video. Um, which is, you know, that's the other thing, why, I, you know, I don't, I'm not motivated by numbers because if you want high numbers on YouTube, you have to, um, you know, post videos consistently and like, you know, not your gaps between videos can't be too far away. <laughs> and, uh, you yeah, know, I think that would compromise my education of philosophy, right? Uh, I'll take my time reading the text and I'll still do that. And you know, so I'm doing these streams that's the plan i want to do them more often but i don't want to um i'm not saying like i'm going to stop doing regular the videos i have been doing no no they're still going to come out but i'm more i'm gonna expand i'm gonna expand let's see what else people are saying if anybody's talking uh yeah <laughs> well thanks <laughs> trying to do the aesthetic thing with the background <laughs> that's funny that's cool Wonder what those books are. Oh, it's all types of stuff in the background. Sharing what we learn helps. Yeah. Yeah, we're all philosophers. It's true. It's true. Um, what separates somebody, somebody calling themselves a philosopher from somebody who's just like saying, oh, I just kind of read philosophy, but I'm not like an actual philosopher. What separates them? <laughs> you know, that's what I want to find out. We could all philosophize. Oh, hello, John's guitar lesson. Uh, a philosopher should abstain from common knowledge or sense. Okay. Uh, you don't have to be a highly educated to be a philosopher, the everyday life philosopher. Yeah, look, we could talk about that. We could talk about that. That's a good discussion. And one of the things I put in the discussion was, what's the difference between philosophy and in ideology what is philosophy basically so yeah we can get into that but i just want to uh, give you some context of what i'm doing here um, and so yeah so what happened is um, when i uh i think it was when was it 
I guess it really started with the <laughs> when uh, uh, the president when in, in when the, when uh, you know uh, the pre- president Trump was elected. That's when I started like pushing myself to like okay, I gotta get out of this theory and get into more applications, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so I kind of, you know, I was, uh, I'm, I'm a very pro um, social justice type of person. Uh, you know, I guess you call that woke or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but that really pushed me to kind of get beyond the whole debating people on the Internet. Um, and then I moved from I'm originally from California and I moved to Tennessee. <laughs> That's a blue state to a red state. And so people think a little differently here. And, and so, you know, I'm talking about all this philosophy, but it's on the Internet. And and so th- those two things combined, it's like, you know, I got to start getting out and talking to people. Kind of doing the Socrates thing, but not not using the Socratic method. Just like having conversations with people. So I started doing that more. I started getting more actively, getting involved with activism. And, uh, you know, that's what I, I do a lot of that now. I am out in the street and talking to people. Um and having philosophical conversations with strangers and people that I don't know, kind of doing the Socrates thing, but not as annoying. Like I'm not, <laughs> uh, and that has really helped me out with my development in, in philosophy a lot more. You know, kind of take, and I find like when you start talking to people, um, person to person, you know that the whole like internet, you know, where people are, are you know, that whole you know, anonymity and people being trolls and raging over the internet. Even when you start talking to people like that have strongly, who strongly disagree with you, you just talk to them in person. You know, I'm talking about like really taboo subjects like gun rights or uh, abortion rights or, you know, religion. You know, people I strongly disagree with. I talk to them in person because I went through this activism groups that I'm a part of. And it's like, okay, well, we're both human beings. We can relate to each other and uh, we have really deep conversations and I like that. So I was trying to see if I can bring that here to this channel as well. And, you know, I, I, and by doing that, I'm like, wow, I'm actually learning a lot of philosophy by just actually talking to people straight up to their face um, uh, about, you know philosophical topics that i discuss here on this channel but in like real world applications you know talking to real people not just on the internet and echo chambers let's let's see is there any added discussion that i missed uh okay i have in a nutshell face-to-face car are too rare these days it is and uh you know another thing is like that's why i'm you know kind of shying away from the whole numbers game of like okay i gotta like focus on increasing my uh viewership count or like trying to get high numbers of views or like up my subscriber count and get as many likes as possible because it just becomes this kind of echo chamber where it's like you just start like forming these groups of people who are just yes, yes people. And, um, you know, just people you agree with and you, you don't, it's not very good for philosophy. is what I'm saying. It's like you just it like minded people, which is cool. It's cool to hang out with like minded people. But in terms of like developing ideas and like really like putting your ideas to the test, you want to like talk to people that disagree with you but but you got to do it in a way that's like not toxic (laughs) so the internet is not like not the best place for that unfortunately so i guess what i'm trying to do with these live streams is kind of trying to bring that safe space for people who disagree who strongly disagree and just have critical conversations kind of like what how i'm doing on the street where it's like okay you're not gonna like punch me in the face you know we have these disagreements but you know, we had this level ground. And so if somebody starts popping up off here on the chat, I can just, you know, yeet them, <laughs> which is what, you know, the the uh, the Generation Z people, the Zoomers say, the Y-E-E-T, the yeet them, just get them out, you know, just because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to put my ideas to the test. 
So, yeah, we got to have, you know, more safe spaces for people who disagree and just have kind of like conversations with people about like, you know, very deep topics. And, uh, you know, to these days, people are like, I, I don't want, I don't like talking about to people about like these taboo topics because I'm afraid or like these people are going to disrespect me or kind of call me person, you know, really horrible names. And it's like. And so we are reliving this world where we can't talk about deep things anymore because everybody's just afraid of, um, you know, and, and it's legitimate where, you know, because there's this critique of like, well, everybody's so sensitive. People don't want to like disagree. Anymore. Well, the thing is, like people are so angry at each other and they, they, they pop off and they say all these horrible and cruel things to each other uh, because they disagree. So it's, it's legit. It's like. People uh, don't want to just say, talk about disagreements because people start like really saying really horrible things to each other. And I guess we got to get back to the part, the, to the, to the a situation where we can have deep conversations about things that are like deeply, you know, important to people and not like, you know, dehumanize people. <laughs> you know, just have some deep conversations. So I just wanted to, uh, do that we need to be okay with disagreeing yeah and you know and also um you know developing our ideas so you know i i, I guess not stop there where it's like oh i disagree with you okay but why why do you disagree? and not not be afraid to to go further where it's like, you know, that's a, the other thing that I kind of want to move past. Like, oh, we I we have to agree to disagree. It's like, well, let's not stop there. Like, why why do you feel this way? Like, why do you really feel this way about certain things? <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I disagree with you, but why? Right. <laughs> uh, instead, of just like throwing your hands in the air and say like, well, I guess we're just not going to agree with each other. Oh, well, that's, that's it. And it's like, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I think that's part of philosophy also. And people don't really want to go that far into it. Because when you start really diving into it, like, why do I believe in what I believe in? You, you know, you'll change. You'll change. Your, you'll, you'll start diving into things. You'll be like, okay, I need to stop thinking this way. <laughs> but you got to be open to that. And it's rough. Uh, yeah, debating is like things that people don't want to do, and I and I and I get it, because in this world, you know, in our current state of discourse, debates are just toxic, or they're just like, you know, they're just shows. <laughs> they're like side shows where it's just like, um, I'm gonna debate you. Let's talk about philosophy versus religion. <laughs> it's like. Or like science, what's better, science or religion? And then they'll just, you know, have these two smart people up, and they'll just, you know, they'll probably have some nice picture pictures, P I T C H, the water pictures that are really nice and fancy, <laughs> and they'll have you know nice suits and ties, and they'll have all these critical, you know, it's like a, a show, and nobody really talks about anything constructive is just they're just putting on a show or they'll just or the in the other instance they'll just yell at each other and uh, nobody gets anywhere because everybody's like no 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 god exists no 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 god doesn't exist you're a horrible human being you're going to hell oh you're an idiot it's like <sighs> and so you know and, and, and so the other thing about philosophy is i, I want to be learn how to talk to people more constructively that's another thing i want to learn how to do and i think this will be a great place to do that okay and so that's why i wanted to start this um i want to do this live streaming try and do this once a week and you know i'll probably up up i'll up my game a little better in terms of you know now i'm using the obs you know, start, sorry for the late start, but I'm, I'm learning. I, 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 that was my bad. I assumed like, oh, I could just, I use OBS for my other stream. So I should be able to do it. And I'm like, oh, nope, I can't do it. Uh, so I'm learning. <laughs> 
And then maybe I do have like better cameras <laughs> that I've used like a webcam. I'll try to see if I could use my uh, GoPro. I, that will definitely give me a more crisper um, look. <laughs> Although I, I'm, I do, I'm weird. I like life uh, lo-fi. I'm really into lo-fi. <laughs> so this type of aesthetic I kind of like. So I might miss it. But I, I am trying to use a better microphone. Because audio is a lot better than uh, than uh, uh, video, so we'll see. And then I, I would also like to see if I can get some background music, which I assume like oh I can do that, but no. Apparently you need. I was trying to see how I can get the background music playing, and, and then you know have the the credits because you can't just play any music; it's copyrighted. <laughs> you gotta have the. Uh, the little thing that shows you the credits of the people. So I, I thought I could just set that up, but I'm like, okay, this is going to take a little while. So hopefully next stream. So, you know, just have a more laid back, chill, relaxing vibe to it. I think it's possible. I think it's possible to have some really deep conversations without like, you know, exploding. And I do that, you know, I do that on the street with real people. <laughs> Have you know? I have discussions about religion, about science, about like uh, social equity. Really deep conversations with people are like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in that. And like, why? So let's see if I miss. Yeah, I would like some elevator music because that's the type of person I am. <laughs> I'm like a relaxing type of guy. Let's see if I missed anything. Oh, uh, that's of note. Uh, an negation is actually a positive assertion into the topic. Okay, yes, I agree. There is some many sides to the topic. Yeah, well, debated. Right, as long as there's no insulting or abuse, and you can you can have a heated. It's okay to get heated, because <laughs> you know when you talk about some things are like very touchy topics, and I'm not saying you can't get touchy. When you talk about certain things, because uh, we're human, then you know some things are very sensitive. I, I get it; you're gonna be emotional, but you know, it, it it just after a while you start seeing people just insulting each other. It's like this is going nowhere. <laughs> so as long as you keep it kind of construct, that's all. Let's see, the finite. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, hello, Felipe, I guess. Um, Barbosa, in your opinion, what are the differences between the philosophy? Yeah, I can answer. I can say that. Uh, you asked, Felipe Barbosa, in your opinion, what are the differences between a philosophical ideology like absurdism and a science-based ideology as inhaling scientific knowledge as the only important type of knowledge? Well, you know, uh, so first of all, okay, I see like I'm peaking. <laughs> I'm, I'm monitoring my levels here. Uh, okay. So first of all, we got to like d distinguish between what's the difference between the word like ideology and philosophy. I guess there is a such thing as philosophical ideology. But ideology and philosophy are two different things. Right, and I think that's a mis a common mistake. People um, think ideology is the same thing as philosophy, and it's definitely not. <laughs> right, uh, you know. Uh, for for example, um, uh, you know, I'll use my name for example, like the my YouTube channel, Black Ponder. Um, you know, Black, like. Well, Blackhood. What does it mean to be black? What is the philosophy of being black? Now, some people might be offended when they hear that. The philosophy, of, or are you saying like, this isn't like, you're, what are you talking about philosophy? This isn't like a, a, a kind of like ideology. Being black is an, an ideology. It's, it's who I am. And right, so I'm saying like, you know, it's not... Um, that's not what, when I say like the philosophy of, of race, of race, like let's say the philosophy of race, 
uh, you know, I'm not saying what is the ideology of race. <laughs> you know, those are two different. Things. Yeah, like you know, which is that's a thing too. But like, let's say blackness. You know, when I, when somebody says I'm black, you know, there's a philosophy behind that. There's a there is a philosophy behind it, and that's not the same thing as saying like. I'm not saying like oh there's this ideology of being black so you must wear baggy pants you must you know be into basketball you must <laughs> you must be into rap music you know that that's a stereotypical ideology you know I'm just saying these racial stereotypes um you know but but I'm saying deeper like you know because philosophy is about like identity and like you know th- basically I'm asking like what what is the meaning behind which is not to say like what is the idea because you can adopt an ideology and it, it, you might not you you're not at all thinking about the meaning behind your ideology, you know, like um, you know like uh, American patriotism for example that's 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 an example, uh, you know I'm a patriot which is a kind of ideology right I'm a, I'm an American patriot but what does that even mean, right? Well, I love my country. Why? Why do you love your country? Or like, in what way do you love your country? I mean, now I'm talking about philosophy. I'm going beyond our past ideology, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had that experience with, um, you know, because one of the things that I'm into now is, um, you know, in Tennessee, uh, they just passed this law about um, where it's um, they're trying to make it well currently it's like illegal to do drag shows in uh, public spaces or where there's children around (laughs) which is ridiculous Uh, and really ultimately it's about like you know the people who are writing these laws and passing these laws they're just in some way equating First of all, they're equating drag shows to like um, queer queerness and more specifically transgender uh, people, which are, you know, they're not exactly the same thing and they're not the same thing. But, you know, they're also, um, uh, you know, just trying to erase, like trying to pretend like they don't, you know, that that kind of stuff doesn't exist. <laughs> Queerness, transgender, like that's something that doesn't exist, right? And so I'm like, we need to look at this philosophically, like the philosophy of transgender identity and the philosophy of queerness. And it's like, wait, what are you saying? You know, some people are like, what are you saying? Are you saying my, that's who I am? Not, that's, are you saying like, what are you talking about? My ideology, the ideology? I'm like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying transgender identity is a kind of ideology that's what that's what the the people writing those laws are saying it's not an ideology philosophy is very different from ideology it's, it's very different right <laughs> right what i'm saying is like you know what what is the meaning of what is what is identity what does it mean to, what does it mean to be a human being right and when we think about gender and we think about like you know, our, our, you know, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? Do we really even know what these terms mean? Like, you know, sex, is sex the same thing as gender? Obviously not, right? So let's explore that. that now that I'm talking about philosophy. And I think, like, when you talk about, like, transgender identity and then you, um, you know, kind of c- comparing that with, like, drag queen you're, you're you're it's a philo- you're you're starting to delve into the the world of philosophy you're like okay why do you think what what the, what how are you threatened what why are you threatened by like the art of drag <laughs> and like what is your beef with transgender idea like why is that threatening to you like this is a philosophical question which is like beyond like what your, your your ideology is we need to question your ideology which is not transgender identity that's not what i'm questioning questioning what i'm questioning is like your belief and your feeling and your ideas behind are what it what it means to be transgender and what it means to be a man what it mean to be human so that's the first thing so you say like 
philosophical ideology like absurdism uh well i i would say like absurdism is not like an ideology philosoph is not a philosophical ideology is a, it's a philosophy <laughs> absurdism is a a philosophy right uh, i think it goes beyond and and so and then science-based ideology as inhaling scientific knowledge as the only important type of knowledge uh is that an ideology no i think that's also a philosophy like or a way of thinking which so so that's that's the, what i wanted to talk about in this stream really like i i i understand what your point maybe you're, you're now going to say like well what i meant was what you're saying but i think like it's important for us to clarify language you know, there's there's people who think like science that's all there is, and there's nothing else. Um, uh, as opposed to absurdism, I don't have a problem. I I don't think I think there's things that science can't explain that exist. Like the metaphysical, like spiritual. I'm I'm into the spiritual, um, and it, but if you don't believe in that, then. That's on you. I mean, I don't have a problem with you not believing in that. Um, that that's fine, <laughs> you know. And I I don't see them as and as opposed to absurdism, which is this idea that life is absurd, and uh, you know, uh, inherent life inherently has no meaning. Uh. uh yeah, I mean, I I think life inherently does have meaning. But if you believe that life inherently doesn't have any meaning, I don't, I don't see that. I mean, that's that's something you, you have a right to believe. I I don't see how that's the, the where the comparison is. Uh, oh, you are you just the differences between the two? Oh, you're saying like uh, science, uh, because there's no nothing beyond like scientific explanation um you're saying like well what how is that any different from absurdism which is this idea like oh well if there's nothing beyond scientific explanation um then in that way are you saying there's no meaning in life or is just like science what well no because you know a lot of scientists who are like atheists or who just who believe that they they find great meaning in scientific exploration so yeah, definitely like uh, there are many scientists who are like atheists who are, are are secular who don't believe in any type of religion or they don't even think it exists. Uh, they they live meaning. They feel they see a lot of meaning in life inherent through the science. Um, so I would say that's a difference. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Clearly seen. I, I probably missed so many comments. Classical background music? Nah, probably not. <laughs> probably like lo-fi hip-hop tunes. I think absurdism is based on individual use. I'm so far behind. <laughs> Utility and scientific is universal. Okay. Science has become a like a religion. Yeah, there's this whole. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because there's this whole uh, debate in uh, the scientific community right now about string theory and like extra dimensions, right? Because uh, you know, they're in theoretical, uh, I guess, physics, theory or like cosmology. Um, there's this idea, you know, the Big Bang that happened, which is like the the beginning of the universe where like, you know, it started from a single point and then the universe just expanded, right? Uh, you know, the question is, okay, what came before that? And there's this, this really significant idea, like a lot of, a popular idea in the scientific community. Oh, like, well, actually there's this thing called the multiverse, which which is funny because it's, you know, based you know, a lot of that you see in like superhero movies like Marvel, <laughs> like the Marvel multiverse, like the Spider Verse. Um, where, but you know, a lot of scientists seriously, you know, speculate like, you know, there's 
there's this thing called the multiverse and there's like basically infinite universes out and about and what happens is when two universes collide with each other a big bang happens <laughs> right right so and then that's why that's how the big bang was was started but then there's a lot of scientists is like well you don't know that how could you possibly know that um, and it's like, well, and then the other side just like, well, you know, I'm just theorizing, I'm speculating. And, and then they even create mathematics to show like, you know, this is a thing that could happen through mathematics. But the, and then, uh, there's these other scientists that are saying, well, you just created some mathematics like that, that has, there's no basis experimental. There's no observational data that shows that that actually happened. So that's not science, right? You know, same thing with the idea of string theory, this idea, like the most, the smallest, the most fundamental particles are little, little strings that vibrate, and based off of how they vibrate is how matter is determined, right? A lot of, sci there's string theorists out there who are like, you know, very important scientists, but then there's other scientists that say like, um, yeah, we don't need to delve into that because you're talking about like sizes that are, they're, they're so small, there's no way we can observe this, so... Like if the, if we can't even observe these things, then this is not science anymore. It's just you just speculating. It's basically it's religion. <laughs> it's like what they're saying. So uh, it, it's funny these these really uh, these really big cosmological theories that actually have a lot of math backing it up. There's this whole other section of scientists that are saying you're just wasting your time with that because there's no way we could ever observe this type of phenomenon that you're talking about. So it's not science. If you can't observe it, then it's not science. It's, it's just religion at that point. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's fascinating to me. But then there's this back and forth that, you know, some scientists will say like, well, not yet, but someday we'll develop the equipment or we'll figure out a method to observe it. <laughs> so hold your horses. So it's just back and forth. It's, it's fascinating. Okay, let's see what's going on. Yes, there are things. Is this stream about philosophy of philosophy? <laughs> philosophy of philosophy. Yeah, sort of, kind of. <laughs> you know, it, it's not even, it's like, what is philosophy? Like, it's, philosophy is not ideology. Philosophy is not religion. <laughs> right. Philosophy is a way of discussing meaning. Really, you know, it's a it's a way to discuss. It's it's a methodology of discussing what is meaningful. <laughs> right. That's that's kind of what philosophy is. Which is you know what what is a methodology? Well, it's very diverse. Right. Well, hello, Bob. That's more like generalization, what, what you just described. Yeah, I don't even know what you're referring to because I'm so late in the conversation. Let's see. Could you agree ideology is dogmatic? Uh, no. Uh, what is dogma? Dogma is just like taking um, just something and just believing in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, every time I hear dogma, I think of like the rapture, <laughs> which is a dog dogma. <laughs> right this the religious idea that you know the the end of the world's gonna happen this rapture that's gonna happen which is actually not even in the bible <laughs> it's just like kind of created by evangelicals and, um, and they just take that as the truth you know there's that movie uh, uh left behind do i where's that book Ah, uh, too bad. I thought I could find it on the shelf. I, I saw it on the ground. I saw this book on the ground, <laughs> and I picked it up. It's called Left Behind. You may have heard of it. It's like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a best-selling book about the rapture, <laughs> the world ending in terms of, like, this Christian dogma, uh, the way the world's going to end, like the Antichrist is going to come, and, um, you know, he's going to start in um, Europe. <laughs> And, you know, everybody who believes in God is going to be taken up to heaven. 
<laughs> and there's going to be a few people left behind that are going to have to <laughs> sort everything out before the year, the few years before Christ returns. It's, it's it's interesting, but this is like this 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 thing is not even depicted in the Bible. <laughs> it's just like kind of this loose interpretation that's made. There's a, there was a movie made about it with um, um, Kirk Cameron, <laughs> the actor who was in that uh, sitcom Growing Pains that was popular in the eighties. <laughs> Apparently, he's like a, a really hardcore Christian. So to me, that's dogma. Dogma is like, uh, you know, accepting like loose interpretation uh, and just believing in it, right? As opposed to ideology. Ideology is just a, a set of principles uh, that may or may not be um, um, founded in solid evidence. Like, um, you know, like an ideology like, you know, I'm trying to think of an ideology that I I, um, I subscribe to. Uh, you know, like mutual aid. And, you know, philosophy can and ideology can go hand in hand. Uh, you know, like and so in activism, there's this concept that's called mutual aid versus like charity. Charity, right? So charity is like you giving, um, you know, some uh, something to somebody that in need um but uh, mutual aid is like giving in a way that is mutually beneficial for you and the person it's not like this like i'm helping you out and you're not helping me out no it's like we're both helping each other out that's mutual aid as opposed to charity um so there's these idea this is kind of like an ideology of like um you know, when you, when I'm giving this to you, that I'm helping you out. And how am I helping me myself out? Well, I'm learning from you, or I'm like understanding your perspective, or I'm I'm learning about the systems that put you in the situation, and I'm destroying those systems by helping you, uh, and that's helping me out. You know, I'm getting to learn. Uh, I'm uh, better understanding my fellow man, <laughs> which is helping me out. And so that's more like the ideology. So like the ideology of mutual aid is like, I'm not, I don't go down with charity. Like charity isn't something I really jive with. Instead, like I'm about mutual aid. <laughs> so which is a kind of like ideology, but that's not dogma. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, so they're, they're different. I would say. Uh, let's see where you go. Uh, and some of the shows get a bit too sexual for children. Oh yeah, for drag. Yeah. So there's different kinds of drag, right? Some drag is very sexual drag, <laughs> sexual life. But not all drag is, um, uh, uh, you know, sexual. <laughs> you know, some drag is very ch child friendly. You know, some drag is just, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire style stuff. <laughs> you know uh and so that's the problem right the problem is we there you're you're assuming uh not not you um the age of god but just generally people assume like oh drag that's a sexual deviant thing it's like well some of it is but a lot of it is not right and if you were go to go to a typical just like go to your average drag show most of drag shows are not like sexual in any way <laughs> they're just you know, they're just entertainment. They're like an art form. Now, there are some drag shows that do get kind of sexual. Just just like many things. <laughs> just like many forms of entertainment. Uh, you know, there's the mature R-rated version. But then there's the, you know, G general audience version. Drag is the same way. Right? The problem is, like, once people start, you know, talking about when people, when there's, like, a questioning of gender, when gender gets... Um, um, you know, um, uh, taken out of the binary <laughs> when, uh, you know, when basically when that type of binary gender norm is, is challenged, it's immediately deemed, oh, this is too sexual. <laughs> it's like, see that, that, that's the problem. It's like, well, no, it's, that's not the, why, like, why is it every time gender is like, taken out of this binary man woman 
that's when all of a sudden it becomes too sexualized. <laughs> that's see, that's what we still have to start questioning. So like I, I see that as like, okay, this is a kind of um, uh, you know, this is a it, it, it it's a kind of erasure. It's a kind of like, I let's not even go there, because it's you know you just overgeneralizing, right? So that's how I see it. Yeah, what's the difference ideology and philosophy? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Like philosophy, we're talking about the meaning. Uh, ideology is more like just the principles or like like the uh, like the standards <laughs> of something. Like we go back to mutual aid. It's like, well, I, I I don't I don't I don't believe in charity. I'm about mutual aid, <laughs> right? So I'm not going to go to like, you know, real events um, that are like thrown by really rich people to just give out like, you know, food to like homeless people. Like, I'm not going to do that because, you know, they're just really just trying to get their tax breaks or something like that. They're not really trying to help homeless people. They're just like trying to look good or whatever, you know. Now, that's kind of like ideology. So your ideology is like, what is, is this charity event? You know, I don't believe in charity events. I believe in mutual aid, <laughs> um, and that's that's so that's like idea. So I, your ideology is like I don't go to charity events. <laughs> right? I go to mutual aid events. So and then philosophy is like so why, why do you not do that? Like like what do you have against charity? And then you can start talking about oh well you know charity is just ultimately it's a way of you know you're just reinforcing the problems that are already there. You're like and you're you're putting on a front. You're like you 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 think you're helping, but you're actually just like just hiding the problem, put a bandaid on a problem. Whereas mutual aid is you're actually like doing things that are like you know you're challenging the status quo or the system that's put in place. You're like you're you're helping in a way that's not going to give you tax breaks. <laughs> you're you're helping in a way that's not going to necessarily make you look good. Uh, you know, but it is going to, to challenge the systems that are like causing the problem, right? And then you could go further into that. So you know, so philosophy is a bit more like deeper, I would say. Okay, that's why they propose those laws. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like. But yeah, I read that. So philosophy is an idea. So philosophy is is more than an idea. Philosophy is a methodology, right? Or philosophy is like a way of of talking about meaning. You know, it's, it's a way at, of driving toward meaning. You know, is is a way of getting to the idea. That's what philosophy is. Yeah. Is a way of arriving to ideas or like examining ideas or like breaking ideas down to their most fundamental level or their most fundamental state. That's philosophy, I would say. We are more than just a gender. Yeah, it's true. Uh, before it is just into. Okay. Yeah, philosophy can be the determining of values. That's something it, which is ethics or moral philosophy, right? Which is that's a so that's a branch of philosophy, you know, um, ethics. Uh, but it, it can also be other things as well. Uh, that's John guitar lesson. What about entertain different ideas? Would be philosophizing. Yeah, yeah, it can. Uh, so let's create 08 as so what's your philosophy or idea of gender and why people possess certain gender yeah so um so if you <laughs> um that's like to me like the question of gender is like the the it's not just gender it's like identity right that is the question that's going that's that's a very important question in terms of us and our current state. I think that's what's holding us back as human beings. You know, it's not so much like exploring outer space or like, you know, what are in the deep 
dives to the ocean. You know, um, what's inside a black hole? You know, these really big questions are like, you know, these really hard math problems. No, it's, it's like, what, who, what does it mean to be a human being? We, we don't know. We have no idea currently. We really don't know. What does it mean to be human? <laughs> right? You could talk about the biological, but of course there's more to it than bio- biology. Right? What, what does it mean to be a human being? Right? And I think when we talk about gender, we're getting more to like, okay, gender, this is something that is a huge aspect of what it means to be a human. Uh, and we got it all wrong, in my opinion, because we are, are stuck in this, this mode of thinking that is like so limiting, where it's like, you know, we, we say sex and gender are exactly the same thing. So your biology determines your, your gender, which is, not, which is so limiting, right? And so like you are biologically born a certain way. And so now society says, okay, you're this, 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 and this. <laughs> so, and you're not and you may not be any of those things but society is like well you're you're a girl so you you like pink and uh you're gonna have babies someday and you're gonna get married and uh you know you're going to like cook and clean <laughs> you know it, 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 we have all these ideas of like you need to, you're this and this and this or, or so you're a man so you're automatically a violent you're violent you're violent and you like to dominate you know, because that's the nature of a man is domination, you know, and, uh, you know, you're aggressive, you know, because all men are aggressive, right? <laughs> you know, and we have these like these ideas, which are just they don't apply to like people that have these biological aspects to them. Right. And, but but the problem is we're we're misidentifying people, right, because we're, we're basing our ideas of identity off these really archaic concepts. To this day, we're still doing that. And so the problem is we have this very limited idea of what it means to be a human being. You know, we we have this very limited. And so now we can't progress as a species. We're like, we can't move forward. We can't grow. We can't evolve because we have this, 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 this limited concept of what it means to be a human being. You know, this is what it means to be a man. This is what it means to be a woman. And that's it. <laughs> Any Anything that's like outside of that is deemed deviant or, um, you know, or wrong or unethical. And like it, it just it just hampers human capability or human expression or you know, human capability. We can't evolve. We can't become better. We can't grow because we're just in these these boxes that are just like don't even apply (laughs) they apply to like a few people like sure like you know if you're born with a penis you may be more aggressive you may be more violent you may be you know but you you know a lot of these notions of what it means to be a man are just they don't apply to most people born with with these sex organs (laughs) right and so like and somebody tries to do something different we just like no you can't do that you know, uh, what, and then when they start doing that, they get like, literally like we just passed a law in Tennessee where it's like, we'll throw you in prison if you do that. And it's like, you're not even allowing the human being to like discover new ways of being. It's like, no, you're going to imprison them. Like that's stupid. <laughs> oh, that's stupid. So that's how I feel like, that's my philosophy. I think like gender is like, you know, a new frontier of like, you know, that's, that's where the money's at in terms of philosophy. <laughs> like in, in identity like we we need to like explore what it means and you know and when we start seeing alternative ideas of humanity and alternative ways of expression uh we need to really look into it because it's like oh, okay human beings are more than what we just when what we just set out or what we just established right they're more than that right and once we explore all these various and diverse ways of being a human being we can create more. We can do more things. We could like, because humanity, we're so diverse and we're so capable of so much, but we just limit ourselves uh, because of these archaic notions <laughs> of things. And it's just, it's too bad. But, you know, that's part of my activism. Uh, it offends women. What, what so? When they use it to invade women's spaces, it's also problematic. It doesn't offend all women. (laughs) 
maybe it offends you, but, um, you know, not all women are offended by, like, uh, transgender women. Some are, <laughs> and uh, but many are not. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't speak for all genders. <laughs> like, you, you know, I mean, it might offend you. And then you got to ask yourself, why? Why does it offend you? Like, what is it about? Wh- why? You know, I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I would, I'm curious to know. Like, what is, what's so offensive about it? <laughs> like, uh, maybe philosophy is like the lens we see the world through. And the mirror we see ourselves through. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> philosophy is the lens. I see more like philosophy like a a, a, a tool like as a as a, a as a tool kit. It's like a utility belt. It's like a a tool belt. <laughs> to me, that's like what philosophy more is. Is is like uh is is a set. It's like your power tools <laughs> that you go out in the world to like deal with to create ideas to build ideas, <laughs> right? What and an ideology? What is that? That is more. Um, um, ide- ideology is kind of like the, the uh, like the, I was gonna say like the road you walk, <laughs> or it's like it's kind of like your frame of your frame. So it's like, you know, where you can go and where you can't go. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the. Um, it's like it's kind of like the house you built. It's, house, it's kind of like your house that you built. <laughs> That's like ideology. It's, it's the place you go where you feel most comfortable. I don't know. Before they're ready for that. Both are a priori and posteriori, and then with pure reason. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I disagree. Let's create oh eight philosophy and ideology are absolutely not the same. And I think that's the problem. That's why I, that's why I made this channel for in the first place because I was like, man, people just don't understand what philosophy is like at all. <laughs> right? You know, they think like philosophy, ideology are the same thing, and they're not. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I, and I wanted to create this channel where it's like, okay, I, if you like look at what I talk about in the books that I read. A philosophy is is what much, much much more than ideology is uh, it's um it's a way of approaching ideas and developing and building ideas it's not like ideology is kind of like the ideas themselves <laughs> you know and philosophy is more like the building and the creating and the examination of those ideas it all ex- stems from one's mind yeah, I guess that's true. Including a what is this? Uh, Communion sort of created meaning. I don't. I don't know what that. I don't know. I haven't seen that word before. I actually need to feed my doggy. <laughs> that's see. That's why I would like the background music. <laughs> so when I leave the camera, you have some music at least. So I'm a tight. I, I gotta feed my doggy, but I'll be right back. Gotta feed dog. Be right back. <laughs> no worries, I'll be right back. I'm not leaving. <laughs> be right back.
uh, of Camus, including a Camus sort of creative meaning. Yes, Camus, yeah. Yeah, Camus, so absurdism is like, you know, it's very different from nihilism, right? <laughs> Which people get confused as well. They say, oh, you know, are you saying, because absurdism says, oh, well, life has inherently no meaning. So are you saying like life has no meaning? No, right? Camus is like, well, no, you create your own meaning. Like, that's so, so there's beauty in that. Or it's like, so you're, it's a clean slate, <laughs> right? So in that way, life has infinite meaning, right? Because you can just make life whatever you want it to, make, to mean, right? Uh, that's absurdism, <laughs> right? Or even... Oh, <laughs> it did a big jump. Yeah. I know I I got like I got a Rembrandt going on, where like most of my face is <laughs> is in the shadow. Maybe I should invest in light. I I'll, I'll think about that. One must think, therefore, one must create or do. Philosophy versus reality. Okay, in my understanding, so it is a. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's uh, Felipe. That's my understanding, too. Mm -hmm. But philosophy doesn't have to be an idea. Let's create OA. Philosophy doesn't, it doesn't have to be an idea. It could be just um, a method at arriving at an idea. <laughs> right. See, that's the difference, right? So philosophy is not necessarily an idea, right? It's in, uh, a way of deriving an idea, right? So in that way, it's different from ideology. Let's see. Oh, you're new. Yeah, that's cool. This is uh, this is definitely the stream for new philosophy peeps. Oh, I'm so far behind. <laughs> Are we talking about Doctor Strange in the multiverse? So yeah, that's a real. You know, it's not just fiction. Or well, you know, it's all and none of it is verified. But there's a serious field of physics, a theoretical physics that um, is into the multiverse. <laughs> And they, they got all this mathematics. Oh, you might hear my doggy. He, he likes to bark. Hopefully the, sh the shotgun mic will uh, block a lot of that. <laughs> but we'll see. But there's a lot of mathematics that blocks it. Uh, that drives at it. <laughs> it's my doggy. <laughs> he, likes, he likes to bark. <laughs> He'll he'll stop eventually. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, put what proof? But what proof does mathematics permeate to the real objects out there? Um, what proof? Uh, yeah, mathematics is um, it's not necessarily proof. It's just a way of describing reality. Uh, so mathematics is a way that we describe what um, the uh, reality that we see. Uh, but, you know, you can create math that for any kind of reality, for ma many kinds of reality. So it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, our reality. So it's true. Uh, mathematics isn't like proof, right? Math is just describing like physics, but then there's like applied mathematics, which is like, that's physics, <laughs> which is definitely, that's, that's based off of observable phenomena that we see. So this is the philosophy of science. Uh, so that's another branch <laughs> uh, of philosophy. And I made several videos about philosophy of science. And that's a good um, feel too, like, Philosophy of science is like, okay, um, you have all these scientific ideas, so what, what do they mean? Or like, 
how do you how does science develop over time you know you you're you're using science but are you, are you using science in the correct way or let the scientific method right like uh is the scientific method good is that a good method see that that's philo- that's the science of philosophy <laughs> or the science of that's the philosophy of science <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, a good example of like the difference between ideology and philosophy. Whereas ideology is like, um, you know, I I only do things uh, based off of science, right? That's an ideology. Whereas philosophy is like, okay, but is that like, what well, the reason why I do things based off of philosophy is be uh, <laughs> the reason why I only do things based in scientific on uh, uh, on the scientific method is because uh the scientific method it applies to observable things and things that we actually experience in reality um and i feel that that's that's useful that's that's useful to focus put our energy into observable things <laughs> rather than things that we don't observe <laughs> so now we're starting you know i don't i don't that's just an example of like that's philosophy. That's philosophy. The truths are all contingent on human perception. That's another thing. And yeah, the, so John's guitar lesson says the truths are all contingent in, on human perception. Yeah, and so there's lots of philosophy about that. That's called epistemology, right? Another branch of philosophy, which is what is knowledge like what what is knowledge and like do do we is it possible for us to actually know <laughs> see that's a lot but there's a whole branch of philosophy that are that's into that you know kant Immanuel kant talks about that uh, hume talks about that a lot where is it like there's a limit to our um to our perceptions as human beings so what do we really know really <laughs> right uh, Religion is just another category or branch of philosophy. And, you know, I disagree with that as well. <laughs> but that's a common thing that people think. Right? It's like, uh, religion is just a philosophy. No. <laughs> no uh, religion is um, uh, a set of beliefs. A set of beliefs. I-, I wish more religious people were philosophically minded, but most I would argue most ph- religious people are not philosophically minded at all. And that's why you got a lot of problems in religion. <laughs> you got a lot of like contradictions and people like religious people doing things that are directly uh, opposed to their religion. Like, like, like Christians judging people all the time where literally Jesus says you shouldn't judge people. <laughs> yeah, people do. Christians do that all the time. And it's like, see, if you thought about like the meaning of your religion, like what does your religion mean? When what is the meaning behind not judging people? <laughs> uh, yeah. So again, it's like religion is like, okay, I just believe this thing, and then but philosophy is like, okay, why do you believe in these things? <laughs> or like, what do the what do these beliefs even mean? Right. So it's, it's different. Science is another branch of philosophy. No, I, I don't think so. You should be the professor. <laughs> Maybe one day. Why, what do you think about Eastern versus Western philosophy? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Eastern uh, philosophy that's from the East is, um, uh, is glossed over, <laughs> you know, which is a shame. There are people who feel like, well, first of all, it's, it's kind of interesting. There are some people who feel like the term Eastern philosophy is problematic because it's like, okay, you're um, categorizing, you're putting this 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 one all category in this broad um, idea of, uh, 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 broad um, 
collection of many, many different kinds of philosophies. Uh, but I think it's useful because it's like, okay, this, when you say Eastern philosophy, basically you're saying philosophies that, you know, aren't, um, you know, discussed <laughs> when you, when you go to uh, and study philosophy in uh, when you try and get your degree in philosophy, you're not likely to uh, study East philosophies from the East, which is sad. <laughs> your, your Western philosophy. Um, I, I like, you know, we're talking about um, various Chinese philosophies like um, Confucianism and, um, you know, stuff like Taoism. Um, and then you got like, you know, even Hinduism, which is can, you can take Hinduism, which is a religion and just completely um, focus on the philosophical aspect of Hinduism. Uh, and so that's another thing about Eastern religions is like there are um, uh, Western Western religions like uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism, and Islam, they got a, a, a strict separation. This, this is philosophy. This is religion. And a lot of um, religious people uh, frown upon philosophy because it's kind of like, it's, it's as if you're saying, oh, well, you, you're trying to get into the mind of God, which is a sin. <laughs> right. Um, or like you're trying to find the meaning of these things, which, you know, God works in mysterious ways. So you shouldn't question or you shouldn't think about such things. You should just accept. <laughs> right. Whereas a lot of the Eastern uh, religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Jainism, and these kinds of uh, religions, uh, Taoism, uh, the separation of philosophy and religion is not as like stark. <laughs> it's not like this is it's interwoven a lot more. Uh, and which I respect from a lot of the Eastern traditions. I like Eastern philosophy much bit more. I find Western philosophy generally way depressing. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's your, you know, you have a right to that opinion. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Buddhism can get pretty, um, if you really start studying Buddhism, it can get really, um, uh, I guess not, I mean, you could kind of take it depressing. <laughs> it can start getting a little nihilistic if you're not careful about it because uh, Buddhism, they start talking about like, uh, basically at the end of the day, like, you know, B Buddhism is like, what, what exists? Like nothing, nothing exists. Uh, and once you begin to understand, like, ultimately, existence is empty quote unquote empty is like that you know once you realize that uh, sorry my dog is tripping <laughs> yeah, i was just taking my dog yeah he looks cool <laughs> i don't know he'd be tripping sometimes uh but he looks fine <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Buddha, yeah, you, what you really start getting into, like, you know, you meditate, and then you reach enlightenment, and you realize, like, um, you know, uh, selfhood is, is, there is no selfhood, there, there is no self, there's only, like, um, you know, this, this, this spiritual oneness, and then even that spiritual oneness is, doesn't ultimately exist in the sense, like, you know, it, existence is just existence <laughs> and it's just like it, it it's interesting i talk about that in what uh, i have some videos on buddhism and where i kind of go into that so the, it could get pretty nile i mean i guess you could take it that way but it, you know i it's kind of beautiful actually it's kind of beautiful so in many ways that's that's the thing too <laughs> hello <laughs> i'm just on the internet Let's see other questions. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Just sorry, my family's walking in. Optimism. Oh, you appreciate optimism? Okay. Let's see. Well, you don't have to. 
Okay, this is a lot of discussion which is to, with other people, which is great. It's pressing to be a lone philosopher at us. Okay. But this seems like you said. <laughs> My uh, dog is tripping. Let's see. I'm I'm just reading through the comments here. Seeing uh, if there's any questions. I'm way behind. But what? Let's see. Sorry. But this stream is more like. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ethical to you may not be ethical to me. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you say let's create L8 says, um, what is it? What is ethical to you may or may not be ethical to me. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, I think like then people shy away from that. They shy away. They're like, well, you know. You have this different idea of what's right and wrong, and I have this different way of what's right and wrong, and so that's it. End of discussion. We, we can't talk anymore. But it's like, no, we still need to talk about, you know, these things. <laughs> these things are important. Uh, and so, you know, people start trying, they dodge complicated conversation where it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to disagree, but can we talk about our disagreements and maybe we'll learn from each other? Like you're seeing with veganism, so my my, I you know my my wife and my daughter are vegans. <laughs> I'm not a vegan because I'm too weak. I I try. We don't eat meat in the house, <laughs> but if somebody offers me meat for free, I'm not gonna turn that down. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Whereas like a, a, I I I always think an actual vegan would be like they'll disdain from that regardless. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, this is that. Let's see. Yin Yang, yep, yeah. Uh, and then there are passive aggressive men. It's true. Okay, so hello, Simon Lawrenson. Apparently, in many European countries, it's normal for public washrooms to be not segregated by gender. You know, this is it. Could, it could work. <laughs> uh, you say I talk about genderless bathrooms. I I went to. Um, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I'll never forget. I went. I, I went to the University of California, Berkeley, right? And I I used to stay in a dorm room, and the dorm room had genderless bath. Guys and girls could um, use the bathroom, and I I wasn't used to that. You know, because I, I I was I'm from a, a traditional you know traditional family, not like super traditional, but you know, I was just kind of I was kind of and you know we were kids basically, eighteen year olds, <laughs> freshmen, you know, just our first year of college. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna get crazy. <laughs> Guys and girls using the bathroom at the same time, but it was fine. <laughs> it was like, like young. Young guys, young girls, used, we were respectful. Nobody was, was nothing bad happened. We just was like, you know, you go in the stall, you post there. And there was showers in there too. Showers, you know, people showered in there. and It's not, there's no problem. <laughs> like it's, it's not a big deal, right? People, people in general know how to act. Of course, you're going to have your uh, outliers, but you, you're always going to have outliers, right? That are going to like not know how to act, um, but yeah, I remember, I clearly remember in college, no supervision at all. <laughs> you know, young ass, you know, people, hormones raging, and we had generalist bathrooms. It was fine. <laughs> it was not, it was, nobody was tripping. This is exit the purpose one. Oh, oh, he did say that. That's actually pretty smart, Milo May. Uh, Zizek said the purpose of philosophy today is to critique ideology. That's pretty. That's a. 
That's a pretty deep quote. I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> so Zach said that. Uh, yeah, that's dive. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Hey, you should definitely use the bathroom. Let's create 08. <laughs> Don't want to let your things explode. You're, oh, wow, I'm just now seeing. Got to feed the dog. Wow. <laughs> I'm so far behind. Let's see. A lot of gender segregation has more to do with moral puritanism than supposed safety. I agree. I agree. It's a Puritan. Uh, and then, you know, I'd further that point and say, like, you know, it's just a way to control social economic power. It's just a way to keep certain powers, structures intact. And it has little to do with, like, you know, you know, even ethics, really. You know, some people have moral agreements and disagreements. I would say even further, like, you know, the people who are passing these laws, you know, some of those people are about morals. But a lot of these people are just like, dude, I'm just. You know how much money is invested in me, uh, is invested in the idea that there's this, this man, men have to be a certain way and women have to be a certain way. You know how much money gets made and is generated by those concepts? <laughs> you know? And to just challenge that, a lot of people are going to lose, a lot of businesses is just going to be destroyed. <laughs> right? So I, I think it's even more on that level too. Maybe that's more of a... a a Marxist critique, <laughs> but maybe I don't know. Yeah, of course you gotta take a gotta take a leak. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know if you gotta take a, I mean you you don't need to. You can just go and use the bathroom. You don't have to even say. <laughs> but hey, that's cool. Hello, uh, memoir it's uh hemorrhoids <laughs> okay hello yeah you know that used to be a thing that's a famous it, it'll be fun if a bunch of philosophers hang out at a bar that used to be a thing in France That I think that's the French philosophers they, they made that famous they would hang out Sartre and uh, Simone de Beauvoir and uh, Camus a lot of those French philosophers, what are the other ones? Um, they hang out. They they even have this cafe that's like famous. I like guess a tourist attraction. That's where like all the great existential philosophers hung out and discuss stuff. Cool. I'm curious. Ideology is too extreme. It can be. It doesn't have to be. Ideology. But it, it, you know, another thing that just came to my mind uh, is a PC master race, <laughs> a gamer thing where you believe like the PC is the best, is the the best console, console better than all the other con Nintendo, Switch, PlayStation Five, Xbox Series One, whatever the newest Xbox. Is. You believe the PC. That's an ideology, right? It's like nothing can beat the PC. I'm only a PC gamer because they have the best specs, which is true. But, you know, are specs everything? But, I mean, that's an ideology. There's right? uh, more to the... Uh-oh. OBS is not responding. I will... Okay, there we go. We good now. I got an error message, but I think I'm okay. Am I still streaming? Yes. Okay, cool. Philosophy is more center. Now, there's some extreme philosophies. Absolutely there. <laughs> there's some philosophies that I don't jive with. Uh, for example, uh, object objectivism, <laughs> which is like Ayn Rand's philosophy. That's, that's kind of out there. Uh, that's a bit extreme. And then also, I got this as a gift. Um, I think this is like, this sells very well. We owe the future. It looks kind of innocent, right? <laughs> it's like a modern philosophy book. But it's, a, it's this modern philosophy. It's called Lonerism. Lonerism. Uh, Elon Musk subscribes to this philosophy. It's this idea like the most important thing is the survivor, the survival of the human species. That's it. That's the most important thing. So 
the the survival of the human species is more important than um is the most important so if like you know um uh you know certain like things that human beings do that uh are maybe morally gray it's okay as it if it drives the human species forward right so it, so that's why you know for example with elon musk he's all about like space exploration and space tourism because he he believes like oh the human human we need to go to outer space we need to like start thinking about traveling to like different worlds because eventually this earth is gonna um die <laughs> we got like that's that's you know that's long long termism right but the the, the the i i don't i don't subscribe to that because it's like well what about earth like let's try and help earth but you know a, a long-termism person might say like well that you know ultimately human beings are going to degrade the earth to the point where we can't live there so best let's start just trying to figure out ways to like leave earth and i'm like and for me it's like no i think we should uh you know put our resources in like just making earth a better place <laughs> you know and you know is the most important thing perpetuating human species i don't think so <laughs> I think like there are more important things than that. Like if the human species, die, like if we come become a, a species of morally inept <laughs> beings, like if our morality just goes out and, but we still continue to survive. Like, is that worth the species surviving? I don't think so. <laughs> right. So I, don't know, I think that's extreme, but that's a philosophy that people seriously subscribe to. I know he's like coughing his, my dog, uh, but he's fine. Philosophy is more balanced than ideology. Mm -hmm. Now, philosophy can be just as, it can be just as far left and far, it can be just as radical and extreme as any other thing. <laughs> he's just got to do it with moderate, just like science. You know, a lot of people say like science is neutral. No, it's not. <laughs> science is just, it could be racist, you know, like the, the practice of euthanics, uh, eugenics, eugenics, right? That was a science, right? But it's, you know, this idea like, um, you know, there's certain qualities in the human species that are better than other qualities. <laughs> so we need to like weed out the, the, the bad qualities and push the good qualities. You know, which is a science that a lot of scientists took seriously, right? But I mean, that was bad. <laughs> so I think anything could be, uh, you know, extreme if you let it, if you take it too far. There's basis in belief. Philosophy, on the other hand, is a critique of belief and belief systems. So you're on point. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Nirvana in Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Nothing else does not mean though. Yes, yes, that's true. So let's create says nothingness does not mean nothing in Buddhism, which is abs that's correct. That's a um a misconception. Or like that or the, another term that's often used in Buddhism, um English translations of Buddhism is emptiness. Like existence is emptiness, which is is not the same thing as like there's nothing there. <laughs> it's more of um, like um, um, there, you know, there, there's a uniformity, or like there, it, it, there's a uh, what's there is not um, something that is. Uh, worth desiring over <laughs> right like uh, ultimately existence is um is it you know what what's there is not like um you know something it, it, you know it's all buddhism Bud <laughs> I, I, i'm trying to figure the words to say this without misrepresenting the religion <laughs> you know buddhism it talks about like you know the, the other misconception is buddhism is about getting rid of desire 
but no, Buddhism is not about getting rid of desire. It's it's understanding like they're so what the things that we do desire are like not actually worth desiring. <laughs> right. You know, um you know, the the things that we we strive for like in the beginning initially are like they're empty. <laughs> they're empty um which is not to say that there's nothing there, but they're they're not worth desiring over. Like you desiring over these things, like material possessions, and like you know, even yeah. You know, first, you talk about material possessions, but then you even talk about stuff like oh, you know, the the beautiful sunset or like the stars in the sky. Ultimately, the Buddhist, you know, the Buddha, when you become when you reach enlightenment, and you see like even that's like that's not even worth desiring over because it's, it's, there's an emptiness there, right? You know, you, you become enlightened in the sense like everything is just, um, you know, the value of things is like we got it all twisted, right? Value, we what we consider as valuable is not like, uh, there is no like inherent value in, in those, even like things that we think should be valuable, <laughs> like you know, the beautiful rays of the sunlight or like that rainbow ultimately even that's um there's like this mis misunderstanding of well the colors are so beautiful and it's like but what what do you talk about colors like that's just like a spectrum of light like it's 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 just like particles it's light waves is empty <laughs> right which is not to say that is nothing there or like it's um you know it, you know, to discount it outright. It's just to say like the way you're desiring it is, is not helping you uh, actually like achieve like a kind of life that's worth a kind of existence that's worth like, um, you know, a living. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And that's when we start getting like this. So now we're getting into deep into Buddhist philosophy. <laughs> right. Well, a lot of, people who who talk about buddhism they don't they don't go they don't take it that far but buddhism takes it that far where it's like oh this is so beautiful this piece of art like really it is look at it is it really beautiful <laughs> like what is it really you know it's just a bunch of um pigments on a, a sheet which is which is not to say that is nothing but it's like should you like is are you does your desire, you desiring this beauty of this painting, is that really helping you, you know, in your life? Is this causing you, is this really causing you more delight or is this some way causing you to suffer more, <laughs> right? Because you're worrying about something that ultimately um, is, is like causing you more anguish than uh, comfort, <laughs> right? This is fascinating the way that uh, Buddhists break it down, if you really dive really deep into it. So in that way, it can be a little like some people would interpret that as, wow, you don't value. It's like, what do you value? Like, because a Buddhist would be like, you know, they go to a museum and oh, that's that's, you know, it's beautiful. But, you know, it's not like something we should focus on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's empty, really, <laughs> which is, you know, different from saying that, you know, the, the Webster's Dictionary version of empty. So a lot of people would take that as like. A kind of it, it, you know some people would consider that as depressing and that's more like a choice you know ultimately like religions are like your their their choices that you make right because some people would be like well you know i don't really see it that way and it's like okay then you know ultimately buddhism might not be for you <laughs> if you want to take it that far um you know and that's the same thing with like christianity right where it's um, you know, this, this is the whole idea of, um, you know, they, they, people ask like, well, how can you, you know, if God is love, if you're saying God is ultimately love, why is there so much suffering in the world? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, the, if you really delve really deep into it, like the, the, the concept is, oh, well, it has to do with free will. Right. Um, ultimately like free will is really the cause of most suffering, even like, things that we don't think are um uh they have nothing to do with free will like a, a natural disaster um 
you know, a lot of these disasters are um, caused by, and we now are understanding it's caused by climate change, which is human influenced, like, like hurricanes that are happening more frequently caused by climate. So it's like humans decided to, to use more fossil fuel and therefore they're causing these disasters that are happening. So it's not like we played no part in this right? or even like in, you know, when a child gets born with terminal cancer, it's like the child didn't chose to do that. And it's like, well, yeah, but you know what, but we've put so much pollution into the world. Human beings in general have put so much pollution in the world and caused so much carcinogenic things to arrive. Uh, the choices that they're, there were choices made that ultimately caused this 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 child to, to develop cancer, right? So it is a choice thing, right? Um, <laughs> so when you really go deep into it, uh, and, and so the the question then becomes like, um, so really it's like it's a it's an issue of free will, and so then you're 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 confronted with the question of. Um, so if you just get rid of free will, then um, there you, you won't have any suffering anymore, right? But that is like, but do you want to live in a world where there's no free will, <laughs> right? And, and um, you know, and, and so, and then we could go further and further down this this path where it's like, well, you know, you since God is omnipotent, right? Uh, can't God create a world where there's both free will and uh, no suffering and and to that you would say the theologian would say well that's absurd that's like that's like asking uh, a, a triangle to have four sides can't you make a triangle that has four sides no right that that's a square right <laughs> you know or you can make a triangle that's four squares but then it's absurd it's like ridiculous at that point like what kind of world is that like it's it's a it's bizarre world right so it just is it can't happen you know it's it's it would be an absurd situation and it wouldn't make any sense so you it would not be a a desirable way of existing right uh, and, and so ultimately it becomes a question of you know, uh, well, God wants free beings that will choose to follow uh, them, right? The Trinity, if Christianity, the Trinity, Holy Trinity, them, the the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and and so some people would be like, well, I I, I don't accept that. I, I'd rather just not choose and just live in uh, and just not suffer. And then then it becomes like kind of like, well, you know. It's a choice. And like at that point, it's like, well, you know, these are the terms of this belief system. And if you don't choose to accept the terms, then this ain't the religion for you. Right. Uh, but see right there, what, what do we do? Right? Now we're talking about the philosophy of religion, right? Which is different from religion. <laughs> we're talking about the philosophy of religion. So that, that was a good, uh, you know, uh, ex, uh, example of, what the, the topic of the stream what's the difference between philosophy ideology what's the difference between philosophy and religion uh, so philosophy is just accepting the beliefs but uh, i mean religion is accepting the beliefs but philosophy is like well what does this even mean <laughs> right okay uh so where did i leave off Uh, let's see. Okay, where was I? Do numbers in there? Or are they just constant? Oh, yeah, that's another um, debate that doesn't really, or a question that doesn't really have a clear cut answer. Is mathematics created or, uh, or uh, discovered? <laughs> Did we discover it is like is the universe ultimately mathematics or is just um, are our mathematics just a way for us to describe existence so we created it uh, I don't think there's a clear cut I, I I tend to think like math is just something we created to describe reality or describe the the, the world and and, you know, like I said, some other people believe like, no, no, ultimately existence is just like 
laws, like mathematical laws. You know, that's where it, it all comes down to that. Uh, but I, I tend to think like, no, um, mathematics is just the human's best way of describing the existence. <laughs> And uh, it's very limited. Like we, we run into these things called singularities. Like we, when we divide by zero, like when you t start developing the mathematics to describe a black hole, <laughs> for example, and you know it, you, uh, it don't, black hole in outer space, right? And it, it turns out you you approach infinity, and you divide by zero, and then it's, it doesn't make any sense anymore. Like the laws of physics break down. And it's like, so what's up with that? Like, what's going on? It's like, we just don't, our, you know, our description of reality is not adequate. I mean, to me, that's like an example. And some people would say like, oh, well, no, it's just, the math is there. It's just, we are, we just don't, have, we don't know, we haven't arrived at, we haven't discovered it yet. And, uh, which, you know, you can argue that. I, I would say like, mm, there might be even even better. It, I think there's a better way to describe reality beyond that's not mathematical, <laughs> right? I, yeah, I think even to say that, um, to say like math is reality is discovered. Like I don't know, it's kind of egotistical. In a way. <laughs> it means like human beings. I mean, we've discovered a lot of things, but I, I I'm all about like human beings have a limit uh, to our perception, and you know we we we've developed these fantastic ways of understanding the world around us. Uh, but they're just, they're just limited ways we discover, discover. I mean, I can imagine like an alien race that doesn't even use math. They just use some other method, some other way of describing reality. That's like beyond what we use. And it probably, it maybe is a lot more accurate <laughs> than, so I, I think it's something we created. John S. Are you from Kenyobi Khan? <laughs> no, that's definitely not Josh from Kenyobi Khan. So let, let's create 08. It's bringing up this uh, anime gaming convention I host every year <laughs> in California. And Josh is just a, a guy that I work with, a good friend of mine that we developed the convention together. But that, uh, that you, you, the Josh S doesn't even sound like <laughs> the Josh I know. So <laughs> that's funny. Right, yeah, Felipe. Yeah. So yeah, I would check out my video on Bo I think it's called the Buddhist Scriptures. Uh, is the n name of the video Buddhist Scriptures Book Discourse, where I talk more in in that. Uh, deeply about that like the con buddhist concept of nothingness and emptiness i get really deep into that uh, and a lot and a lot of people who are into buddhism uh, on a surface level don't don't get that far <laughs> into it uh, but it gets really deep in that way uh, and i talk about that Let's see. Right. Isn't it funny? I think I the way I see it, like that's what they're just saying. All things are just meh. But for them, for the Buddhists, it's like that's beautiful. <laughs> that's amazing. That's like, yeah, it's just it's all just it's just it's nothing. Which is not, you know, again, we're we're using language that doesn't you know, the English language doesn't really describe, <laughs> you know, the closest thing we have is nothing and empty, but it's more just like, yeah, like, it's just meh. <laughs> it's just meh. And isn't that beautiful? It's just beautiful. It's like, it's all just meh <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> and, you know, I think a lot, I, I can see some people finding great uh, contentment in that, great joy in that, who be like, you know, it's like life is not like that big of a deal. Existence is not really that. It's just, it just is. And I'm cool with that. You know, I can, I just, I can see a lot of people jiving with that. 
But I could see a lot of other people be like, uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. <laughs> I I want some I want some highs and some lows and I want some uh you know, be blown I want some um, you know something that I can like fight for and strive toward and suffer for and like I want to be to achieve something and feel like I've uh, you know met some great thing through some like you know go through like this challenging ordeal first and Buddhists are saying that that's all an illusion <laughs> like that whole like achievement uh, you know sh- striving and like you know going toward it ultimately is all just an illusion <laughs> It's just interesting. Buddhism is like the multiverse, if that exists. <laughs> right, but then uh, the Buddhists would be like, there's no such thing as a multiverse. That's a, that's a, uh, a limited understanding of reality. There is no multiverse. There's just only one verse. <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which is funny. I stop eating, but how does religion explain natural disasters prior to industrial revolution? <laughs> oh, prior to industrial revolution? Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, um, you know, so you asked, um, Felipe Barbosa asks, how does religion explain natural disasters prior to the Industrial Revolution? Um, well, first of all, we know, like, through through science, <laughs> scientific research, that disasters, like, environmental disasters are happening more frequently. Right. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, so, um, there were less disasters back in the day than they are now. Uh, and so you know there's that and you know and also disasters weren't as large scale as they were um, uh, back in the I mean they still happen right but then even even you know and it's not to dismiss or it's not to say like people deserve to die (laughs) you know I'm not going to go you know don't go down that road it's like well you know they just deserve no um you know, and it's sometimes, you know, uh, things happen and it's nobody's fault. That's definitely true. Um, that happens all the time. But, you know, you know, for example, you live next to the coastline. Uh, you make yourself more vulnerable to, um, uh, you know, um, tsunamis, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, not to say, you know, I don't mean to be flippant about that. Be like, you know, so all those people who died of tsunamis, they deserve to No, I'm not saying that. But, I, <laughs> but what I am saying is like, you know, you, people, you know, you, you know, if you live on a fault line, uh, you know, on earth, you're more susceptible to earthquakes. Um, you know, that that's just the thing, <laughs> right? So... You know, these are things, they're still ultimately choices now, you know. I'm not saying nobody deserves to die or anything like that. You know, but I am saying, like, there are very few natural disasters. Maybe earthquakes would be one, because maybe you just didn't, you didn't know you lived on a fault line. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, um, you know, a uh, uh, you know, it's the thing, like, you, let's say you live on uh, the earthquake territory back before industrial, like, way, way back in the day, before there were skyscrapers, right? Before there was, like, you know, cities, right? And so when an earthquake would happen, you know, it might be less likely for you to die because there was, like, less things that would fall on your head, right? Or, like, there's less things that would collapse upon you or, like, you know, there weren't like sewer systems and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, th- these are things that we would think about. Uh, I think suffering exists as a way to build one's character and spirit. Without it, that level of spiritual development wouldn't be possible. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, 
to think about that. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think I, I I disagree with that more and more as I get older. <laughs> but um, I do think like pain is a way of development. I, I don't, I think pain does develop the spirit, but I don't think pain is necessary for the spirit to develop. I, I'm more of, of the mindset of uh, spiritual development requires free will and free will, it, part of free will is suffering, period. And it's like, it's like, that's just how it is. That's just the way it is. It's not so much like, you have to deal with it. It is, it's just like you, it, it's not so much like something that you, you have, well, <laughs> how do I say? Um, it's not a situation where like, um, you, you, you must go through this to, to, for you to do. It's just like you as a free person are just going to deal, deal with it. It's just, that's just how existence works. You know, uh, I, I don't know how best to describe that because it is kind of like what you're basically saying is that you have to deal with it. <laughs> um, to me, it's like I use the, the square example in the triangle. Uh, like if you have three sides, you are a triangle. It's just the definition of what it is to be a triangle. <laughs> All right. uh, a triangle has three sides like. Well, this triangle wants to have four sides. Well, you're not a triangle anymore. You're a square. Right? <laughs> so it's like, it's, it, to me, that's what it's like. It's like, you know, when people say like, I want to be, su I don't want to suffer, but I want to be free. Well, then you're not going to be free, right? Because it, that's like saying, I want to be a square and you're a triangle. <laughs> right? It's like, I, I want to be, uh, I want to have four sides and I want to be a triangle. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so that's how, that's more how I see it. It's like, uh, free, if you want to be free, then you're just going to suffer. You know, that's just, that's what it means to be free. That's part of the definition of freedom is suffering. You know, like that's, that's woven into what freedom is. <laughs> that's not how I see it. You know, and so you said talk about spiritual development. Yeah, yeah, spiritual development in other in other words is is freedom. <laughs> that's you know, to me, to me that's what freedom is. Freedom and spiritual development. Like you cannot, a spirit cannot develop if a spirit is not free. Yeah. And freedom, just nece ne you know suffering, or you know what do I say necessitates freedom. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, suffering uh, by necessity, no. Freedom uh, by necessity requires suffering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, emptiness is like a computer storage where it has a potential to store limitless data. Oh, that's a way to look at it. Emptiness is like a person pour tea into an empty cup. If you empty your cup, you will not be able to pour all the tea into your, the cup. Yeah, emptiness. Okay. Oh, if you don't empty your cup, you will not be able to pour all the tea to your cup. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for the perspective. I appreciate it. And thanks. I didn't get the reference. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. Have you read Berserk? I don't like Berserk. <laughs> the manga, you're saying? I do not like Berserk. I know it's very popular. I just thought it was too violent. <laughs> I like violence. I do. I like violence. But I just felt like it was just kind of unnecessary. Some of it was unnecessary. I understand, like, the... the I, I understand, like, you know, 
violent things happen in the world. I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, and it's it's realistic. It's trying to be realistic. But I, don't know, I thought some of the violence was over, and you know, it's got a lot of sexual violence too, which which you know, violence is violence, sexual or otherwise. But I, I just felt like okay, it's a little too much, and I'm like, why is this? Why is this here? I, I guess it's for people who just like violence, which I'm not dissing that. You know, the, you know, I'm not gonna say you know because people have their preferences. I I just felt like you know some a lot of that violence is is unnecessary, and I'm not trying to be a prude. I'm not a prude. I like I you know I like you know I like fight scenes and um uh, you know uh, hand to hand combat and martial arts and uh, I'm in down in sword fighting. That's all good. But so, there's a point where it just gets a little too much, and you're just sitting there. You're like, "Why is this? What's this all about? Like, why is this here?" And some people say, "Like, well, there's a meaning behind it." Like, really? So I, I, I thought it was a little too much, <laughs> the violence. Uh, but if you're into, it, I know some people are like, "That's the greatest manga ever." I, I, I just thought it was a little too much, and, and so I don't know. Sometimes I was getting the vibe where it's like, "You, you, you just, you know, I, I don't like it when people kind of like." It's kind of like you're putting up a front almost. It's kind of like like you know, there's this this is really deep, and it's like this isn't deep. This is just violence for the sake of violence. <laughs> it's kind of like you know that's why I, I'm not really into stuff like The Last of Us and The Walking Dead and like all this hyper violent shit. <laughs> and you know, and it, yeah, I don't like how it's like there's this veneer like well, there's like a meaning behind the is there really? <laughs> or is this just like there just to be there and just riding this whole I don't know I think we kind of live in a, this world where um, you know violence is kind of worshipped now and it's just like oh isn't that so cool it was so violent oh my god so traumatized I don't know we it's like we we idolatize or we idolatize we 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 a trauma is this idol that we worship. I, I can't even pronounce the word. <laughs> Idolatize? I don't know. Uh, we deify. We deify violence. <laughs> or uh, trauma even. Not even just violence, just trauma. <laughs> Which is a kind of violence. Uh, and I, I'm just not down for that. Where it's like, oh, it's so cool. This person went through so much agony and torture and, and pain. And look how far they've gone through it all. And I'm like, eh, I'm not really down with that. So I, I don't like Vi- I Berserk. It's, it's cool. I can see why people like it, but yeah, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, kind of. Uh, uh, I will not be able to understand what you're telling me. Emptiness in Buddhism. Yeah, well, if you want to know, know, I want to know more about the concept, uh, you let's create eight oh eight you seem to know a lot about it but if you want to know more i do talk about i have some um videos on buddhism i think i made a playlist for that um or you can look at the videos or you can just like check out the books that i'm talking about which go more into depth about it uh, but yeah it's very fascinating matt's is like neutral law it's some of the existential I thought math is a universal language. Yeah, pretty much, you know. Is it a language? It's sort of. It's more just like a description. So I guess it is kind of a language. Yeah, it's a language. Yeah, it's kind of a language. It's more of a... a and to me, math is just a way to describe uh, reality. <laughs> That's what math is to me. Um, and it, it's a very good way that we have. It's like a very good way. One of the best ways, you know, and if somebody were to say like, well, it's kind of the best way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't debate them on that. Because it is like we can do a lot. We can predict a lot of things using math. <laughs> like we, we, can, we understand a lot of the physical world through mathematics. Even the uh, aliens speak math. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of a, 
that's kind of a, a what do you call it? Um, I don't want to say ego, um, narcissistic. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, you, you human you, uh, as if human thought is like the only thought. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you know. I remember some, I got a question one time where you do you believe like all of the universe is an is a simulation? And like maybe maybe not, but I doubt it um, because why you know we think like you know uh, it's a simulation because you know there's people there's probably if something somebody smart smarter than us they're going to simulate our reality it's like you don't know some some you know different beings may have different priorities like there could be like high, more highly intelligent beings that have absolutely no interest in simulation <laughs> that's not even what they are they don't care about that <laughs> how would you know how how would you know what another being would even think you know and we, and we say like well you know i think like something we make this assumption as if like well everything has to think like us or like our higher beings think like us but just more advanced and it's like they might they might com- think completely they, and they probably do like think completely different from us like and i always say like math is like math is a human thing it's something human beings develop and you know i i would not be surprised if there's like aliens who like use a whole different kind of way of describing reality that is not mathematical at all (laughs) it's like it's just some other thing that they use to like discover the laws of what's happening that's not like math at all (laughs) or or logic the way we understand logic I would so I wouldn't even say that like aliens have a better understanding. They what is like math is just something that we've developed. That's why I'm saying like I think math is a creation. It's not like we, discovery because that's just the way we understand. Somebody who's a being that has a brain that's like structured differently could may, maybe see reality completely different, <laughs> right? Uh, that's how I feel, and I, I think we we fall into that trap. We often human beings fall, often fall into this trap and say. Well, you know, you know, people, you know, things, everything thinks the way I do. And it's like, no, (laughs) that's not the case. Probably not. Oh, you're Taoist. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Naturally. Yeah. I've done some videos on Taoism, too. What is it? Dao Dao Dei Jing. <laughs> Check it out. I've done it on that one, and then um, a few other uh, Taoist texts I've done. Okay, see you later. Let's create. Oh, eight probably already left. <laughs> see ya. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's good for world building. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, world building is. I'm not. That's another thing. My daughter's really in the world building. I'm not so much. World building is cool, but I'm more like character development. I, I I'm a character person. Um, that's what she likes. Uh, my daughter loves Star Wars. The um, the the episodes one, two, and three, which most people think are garbage, because episodes one, two, and three, you know, when Anakin is when Darth Vader is young, <laughs> and um, before he you know, he, Darth Vader becomes Darth Vader. She really likes those because they, they developed the world of Star Wars. They developed the lore and she's more into that. <laughs> and I'm more just like, yeah, but what about the characters? <laughs> so I didn't like those because the, the character development, I felt like it's kind of lacking. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's scary how easily people can switch to violent, you know. How easily people can switch to violent and animalistic part of themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, part of it is natural, but I think a lot of it is also uh, programming. 
is we just we live in a violent culture <laughs> right where we prioritize violence and we don't like yeah it's just violence is worshipped it's too bad <laughs> and you know when people like try to become peaceful and like try and talk things out it's like oh you're a pussy you're a pansy like you know you gotta settle this like man <laughs> that kind of bullshit and you know you still see that to this day right you know all conflicts get resolved through violence and if you try to resolve it through other means you're you know you're not doing it right and so a lot of it, the violence that happens in our society is encouraged by our society You said that freedom equates to suffering. Well, I didn't say that. I didn't say it equates. <laughs> right? I said that um, uh, as a result, we have freedom. So as a result, we have suffering. Like That's like one of the sides of freedom. Like how the, the triangle has three sides. So one of the side, you know, one of the aspects of freedom is suffering. But it's not, freedom is not all, you know, freedom doesn't, it's not all suffering, right? So let's let's break, let's stop there. So then, when there is a suffering, are we enslaved? Doesn't enslavement cause suffering? Are you saying that freedom doesn't exist? Uh, no, freedom definitely exists. It. Uh, so when there isn't suffering, when are we? When are we never? When are we not suffering? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 to go back to Buddhism, Buddhists would argue, Buddhists say life is suffering. That's like one of the four noble truths. <laughs> it's like to live is to suffer. See, that, that I think the Buddhists got right. Living is suffering. When are you not suffering? You know, even like, you know, you're, <laughs> you know, it's a kind of a, um, you know, one could say like, well, that's a dark way of looking at things, but it's kind of true, right? Um, I mean, we're having a good time here. But, you know, I'm getting a little hungry. You know, I'm getting a little thirsty. You know, it's, it's a little bit of suffering happening. <laughs> it's like your body is just constantly fighting to survive. <laughs> you know, some, you know, more than, you know, some people more than others. <laughs> right. And, you know, some in, in some instances of time, your body is fighting less than others. But, you know, you, you're always fine you, when you breathe air. You know, you're just, you know, even though it's like subconscious, you're still like, there's kind of like some suffering going on there. So you're saying when there is, isn't suffering, are we enslaved? Um, well, I, well, no, we're not enslaved. Uh, but I, I, but then I would argue like, I would go to the life, to the Buddhists and say like, well, you know, you're basically suffering all the time <laughs> you know to a very small extent like right now like i'm 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 suffering right now but it's like so minute but it's still there like you know because the just natural urges and desires and wants and needs and even like the my body is fighting to keep itself alive it, it's suffering you know <laughs> yeah. um, I, I would say but then, so then to take it further, like, okay, but what about, the, so the Christian idea of when you die and you go to heaven, you, there's no more suffering, which, you know, Christians believe that. I'm a Christian, I believe that. So are you enslaved at that point? No, I would say that. But I, but I, but I would also argue that, um, do you have freedom at that point? I, I, I think, like, with Christianity, it's like, again, it's a choice. It's like... You're choosing to devote your entire existence to God. You know, that's what it means to be in heaven, in my in my opinion, the way I see my theology. And so like your freedom, you give up your freedom to God, which is great, you know, to my mind, because you're gi gi giving up your freedom to this ultimate, um, um, this, this like all knowing, all loving, all powerful being, of course, like you're giving, you're letting, you're, you're saying like, okay, you do what you want with me because I know you know everything and you're all loving and you're all powerful. I know you're going to do what's best for me. So I give up my freedom to you. That's what, so now you're not suffering. But you've already developed spiritually before you've made that get that decision to do that. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. 
you've already like made that choice of, oh, you know, I devote myself to God. Like my freedom, uh, I give my freedom up. You've already made that decision. So you're not enslaved at that point. <laughs> you're, you're voluntarily like allowing your, your freedom, to, which is, you know, a different kind of um, existence, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's something that, that's a topic in and of itself. I could spend a lot of time on that topic. I don't think we have time enough. That could be next stream or something. Am I, am I finally at the end? Yeah, am I finally at the bottom? That's funny. Uh, that's an interesting thought. I'll have to think about that. Freedom necessitates suffering. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Like, there is no freedom without suffering, I think. Um, so if you want to be free, then what is it? Uh, I think it was Sartre, John Paul Sartre, who was an atheist. <laughs> he said, we, we are, we're, is, yeah, I forgot the quote. Um, we're, we're doomed to be free. <laughs> or like, you know, we are, uh, we have this onus. Like freedom is like our, our, um, you know, the weight that we carry. <laughs> like he, he said it as a kind of like, it's this, this huge responsibility and this thing that we have that, you know, cause it's not like all good. Right. And it's like, it's hard to be free. Like it's, it's difficult to be free. Right. Of course it's better. Like that's what we want. Right. We, you know, we don't want to be enslaved, right? Like that, that's horrible in and of, that's also horrible. And it's more, it's a lot more horrible, but it's not easy to be free, right? <laughs> We're doomed to be free. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. Do you have a list of all the books you read on your channel? Uh, I don't have a list, but I, you can basically just like, click on my channel and click videos that video tab and like every single video is about a book that i read <laughs> so there i mean there's your list right there <laughs> yeah i find it humbling that the universe isn't a mass of gray goo okay okay that's cool pros may you Maybe God is a solution to the... Okay. <laughs> Cody, I don't think I said hello to you. Hello, Cody. Well, it looks like I've reached the end of the chat. And uh, we have been streaming for almost an hour, two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> That's a long time. So I think it's time for me to sign off now. I, you know, It was very nice talking to y'all. And I, I hope to do this next week. Um, hopefully it'll be the same time, but I will definitely put that in the, the chat and hopefully I'll be, you know, I'm learning how to do better streams. I got the, uh, microphone, uh, maybe I'll, I will definitely try and see if I can do a, a better, uh, let's see how the, a better camera will work. And also I'll try and get some like nice background music. <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, I do like the lo-fi. That's just my thing. I, I, that's my particular. <laughs> I'm really into like old ass formats like vinyl records and I, I even like cassette tapes. I even own a VCR, which is stupid, but I don't know. I just I like shitty ass quality. <laughs> I'm like one of I'm a weirdo like the lo fi. I'm really into the lo fi. So this is this camera quality is great. I, I like video sh shot like they're they're shot in like two thousand eight or something. <laughs> Pre high definition. So this is not a problem, but you know what? I'm gonna make the effort. I'm gonna make the effort and use uh, <laughs> a better care camera. And just see, just try, give it a try. Um, so this is a work in progress. Um, tell your buddies, tell your friends, share. Because uh, I like to talk more people. I'm trying to develop myself as a philosopher and I think this is um, part of it. Of course, we're still gonna do the regular videos. Like I said, uh, I'm currently reading Hegel's The Science of Logic. This is not, a, this is just a binder where I print. And I'm like halfway through, so it's still going to be a while. But that'll be my next video on that topic. and um, But that will be several weeks from now. 
but thanks uh have a great night okay natural uh element uh bunkle <laughs> bye bye and then josh s peace out um, see you later felipe